my guy Cindy from Cindy's Art. Today we are going to do a an easy watercolor ocean beach wave that's kind of crashing in. It's not quite hit the shore, it's still out there, but it, there's a beautiful skyline, beautiful water that you can see in front of the wave and, ni and nice and soft behind. I got this reference picture from unsplash.com. Great picture to grab hold of uh, photos that you might want to paint and the only thing you need to do is to make sure you mention the artist. So when I'm starting off today, I'm starting with, with my Arches 140 pound cold press paper, which means there's a little bit more tooth to it. Um, hot press is very, very smooth and that's beautiful. I like to use that for botanicals and don't be afraid to try hot press. I was afraid because I didn't know if it would hold the water well, and it does, and I'll show you that in another video. But today we're gonna continue on with this um, beach wave. I feel like it's kind of easy because I'm keeping the background very simple, the sky very simple. We're gonna focus on this mid wave that's crashing in, and we're gonna work up uh, some of the blues and the teals that are in that wave and underneath of that wave. We're gonna save the white for the last, and then I'm going to take you into the foreground of this wave and we're going to do a nice smooth glassy look and then we're going to add a little bit more of the details at the very end. So we keep it simple, we lay it out uh, with just our washes and identify the light and then I want to work and focus on that detail of that wave with you and I've put a good portion in here where you can watch what I'm doing with that wave and um, do it yourself. And I think I've given you enough close-ups on this video. And let me know what you are painting. Let me know what you would like me to be painting next and what we can tackle together. And I wanna encourage all of you guys, um, especially if you're doing watercolor painting as a hobby, get a couple friends, even in the midst of COVID, have a watercolor night. And um, you guys can go in on the cost of the watercolor supplies. I list my supplies in the video or in the uh, section in the description below for you, and um, I go on Amazon. I provide those links, and I think I might wind up send, uh, giving you some alternatives. I will never give you an alternative for watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is the most important resource that you will purchase, um, and that will make all of the difference on how your painting turns out. Is your watercolor paper, believe it or not. Um, I don't mind making some other recommendations for paint, but if you don't want to get frustrated with watercolors, I was terrified to try watercolors. I've only been in it for a couple years. I was terrified of it. And one of the things that encouraged me the most was getting water, good watercolor paper. So I'll put together a video that kind of tries different papers out so you can see the difference of them. So let's get on with our painting. I'm using washi tape to tape my paper down. I don't want it moving around a lot when I'm painting, so there's times where I will use this. Sometimes I don't, uh, but I actually prefer it. So I have links down below in the description where you can look and buy like a 24 set. It's a really good price for washi tape. You can buy sets of six. I get them through Amazon. It's a great price, great product. Easy to take it off when the painting's done and I'm not ripping any part of my paper as I'm removing it. I tested out a few colors. It's neutral on the left, then gray of gray is next. And then I have horizon blue right there. And the next one is cerulean blue. And then this is a very, very light shade. It looks like it is a raw sienna. And I'll make sure that I list the correct one in the um, list below. That's a yellow ochre. And I'm trying it out because I just want to get a picture of what colors I'm going to choose and use for this painting. So that's what's on my palette.
I started off by focusing on the horizon line so I don't have water all over this entire paper. I've got it on the section that goes from the horizon line all the way to the bottom part of where the wave is cresting down and breaking. And in front of that wave, there's this nice, beautiful, smooth section. And I'm not focusing on that part. So you're gonna see two lines develop. And basically I'm sketching this out very lightly because towards the horizon line, it's really soft and really light. And I wanna preserve that and keep that concept as I continue to paint. I've laid in a little bit of my horizon blue and there's a tiny, tiny bit of marine blue in there too. And I also have at times wiped those white lines to make them whiter. And uh, I use a little bit of water to do that. So I want to get a feel for where some of the dark is now. I tend to um, put in a painting like, okay, here's where my light ones are, but now I need a little bit of contrast so I can see where I'm going and what I want to keep is dark, what I need to remember is light. So see what works for you. Um, I like putting the light first, a little bit of contrast, and then working on my mid-tones. Tell me what your process is too. I'm continuing to layer colors and as I do that I'm building up uh, the, the satur saturation, it might be someone else might call it deepening the, the picture I'm thinking about when I use my camera, uh, what I do in order to deepen the colors. Um, but with watercolor I always picture it like um, stained glass and when I layer colors in there it just continues to build. You still have the colors you lay down. Um, underneath, uh, but I will build those colors and then I'll add in details. So just watch along and you can always press uh, slow down on this video. The video settings in YouTube allow you to slow it down. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I would love to hear your feedback, suggestions that you may have. Tell me what you got out of this video. In this area, you can see that I am not painting out full lines. I'm dabbing in color. This is slightly wet, and it makes um, the paint bleed when I put it on there. It keeps it nice and soft.
Remember in a painting that you can't see the light unless you've got the dark. So you can see around this uh, crashing wave and that foam that I have been building up very dark lines around it, especially underneath the top of that wave. It hasn't yet gone into being the white foam. Um, and you build that up so you can see the depth, so you can see that there's, you know, like someone's got a hole punched in the middle of that thing and it looks like a wave that's coming down on top. Right now I'm using a sponge and I'm dabbing on white gouache, which um, is a little thicker paint. And um, I love sponges. Uh, you don't have to use the really expensive ones. Buy one from the dollar store. We've got one of those in America. Things cost a dollar. It's just very inexpensive. But pick up any cleaning um, sponge that you would normally buy for your house and uh, take a portion of it, cut it up. That's the trick of it. I make uh, sponges that I use for trees and it's out of the cheap sponges. So I have some fun ones that you know, you'll look at and say, oh, I want those fancy ones. Get them on Amazon, get them on Cheap Joe's. Um, they're a lot of fun to use, uh, but I don't mind um, shortcuts and I'll use whatever I need to in order to make painting work. Guys, that includes sticks. I use sticks at times to, to put on my masking fluid when I want to block out an area and protect it and not paint it. Um, a stick is wonderful, so I'll break, I'll break a stick off of a tree, <laughs> clean it off, and then use that thing to dip in my masking fluid and then create the lines that I need to. Anyway, just a few extra tips for today. 